let's start with problem one. So problem one says refer to the equilibrium phase diagram of pure water and we're asking how many degrees of freedom when we are referring to the triple point. Okay, so let me first change this. So this is pressure, this is temperature. I'm assuming this is gonna be degrees Celsius because it's showing me that I have vapor at 100 and I have a solid around zero degrees Celsius. So I know that these two values, 100 and zero, those correspond when I have a pressure of one atmosphere. Now I have three phases because this is pure water. So I only have H2O, one single kind of molecule. I have solid, liquid, and phase, and vapor, I'm sorry. So first, A refers to the triple point. The triple point is this point, which is right here. So I'm gonna write here my triple point. So this triple point, how many degrees of freedom do I have? For this, I'm gonna use Gibbs rule. So Gibbs rule. And Gibbs rule says that P plus F is equal to C plus two. What I know that P is the number of phases that coexist within a specific system. So in this case, P will be equal to how many phases are coexisting at this triple point? Three, right? So I have solid I have and I have vapor. So P will be three plus F, which is the variable that I'm looking for or the one that I'm trying to solve, F equal to C. C is going to be the number of components of the system. In this case, I only have H2O or water mole, which means that this is going to be one plus two, meaning that I will have F equal three minus three, which is equal to zero. So my degrees of freedom, my degree of freedom is equal to zero. Now, this degree of freedom is a number of independent variables, or in other words, the largest number of thermodynamic parameters. Those thermodynamic parameters can be pressure, they can be temperature, that can be varied without determining one another. So in this case, number of independent variables that I can change is equal to zero. So we have solved this. Now, B, B is asking me how many degrees a freedom again, are there along the freezing line? Again, if this is pressure, this is temperature, so this is gonna be degrees Celsius, I have a zero and 100, and I have phase. Uh, so here, it's asking me about the freezing line. So this line is called the freezing line. This is gonna be my freezing line. This other line will be the line that separates liquid and vapor. So this is the vaporization line. Again, this point would be my triple point. Triple point. So now we are being asked the degrees of freedom along this freezing line. So along this freezing line, again, I'm gonna use the Gibbs rule or the Gibbs equation, where P plus F is equal to C plus two. And again, let's recall P is a number of phases that coexist within a specific system. So in this case, I have how many phases? I have only two, solid and liquid, meaning that P will be equal to plus F, F. So now C, C is the number of components for the system. How many components do I have here? Only one, because it's only H2O, meaning that this C will be equal to one. And I have one plus two. Therefore, F will be equal to three minus two, meaning that degrees of freedom is equal to one. So now let's go to problem two. So for problem two, we have, uh, and this alloy, contains 53 weight percent of nickel and 47 weight percent of copper in this figure. So this figure, which is another phase diagram, shows us 
the elements of an alloy. This alloy has nickel and has copper. Here we have 100% of nickel. And here I have, of course, 0% of nickel, meaning that on this other side, I have 100% of copper. And this alloy has 53 weight percent of nickel, meaning that if I go from left to right, this 53 would be right here. So that would be 53% of nickel. So this is the line that I'm going to have for this specific uh, composition. Now, the first question is, at 1,300 degrees Celsius, we need to make an analysis, assuming that we have equilibrium conditions. And first, we are asked the number of phases that are present at 1,500. So I'm going to go back to my phase diagram, and I'm going to project this temperature horizontally, and I will find the intersection point. So that would be right here. It's going to be my intersection between 1,300 and this composition of 53 weight percent nickel. So this is going to be, let me write here, 53 sir, weight percent sir, nickel or 47 weight percent copper. So how many phases do I have here? I have L plus alpha, meaning that I have liquid and solid. How many phases do I have here? Well, I have L plus alpha, meaning that I have liquid and I also have solid. And the solid would be my alpha phase. What is the chemical composition of each phase? The chemical composition of each phase for this, I will go back to my plot and I will have to, let, let's use a different color. Uh, I guess I'll use black. And I'll have to find this composition here and this composition right here. Sorry, this would be my liquid composition. So it'll be WL. And this other one will be my solid composition WL. So now I'm going to have to draw another line, vertical line that will come like this, and another vertical line that will come something like this. So this WL turns out to be approximately 45 weight percent. And the solid composition, 58 weight percent. So now I can come back here and I can say that my liquid composition is 45 weight percent, while my solid composition is 58 weight percent. Now I need to find the amount of each phase present so if I go back, I'm going to check, and let's use another color here, that point that I am analyzing is this composition, which is going to be equal to W0 or W0 equal to 53 weight percent. And if I want to find the percentage or the fraction of each phase, let's go to this new slide. We have liquid and solid. Therefore, we're going to have a fraction of solid and a fraction of liquid. So for the fraction of solid, so let me write here the fraction of the solid phase, that is xs. This is equal to my actual oh. composition minus the liquid divided by the difference between solid and liquid composition. So this will be equal to, if I go back to my problem, I have 53 because the problem is telling me that I have 53. I have 53, well, the compositions of solid and liquid are 45 and 58. So remember that. So W0 will be equal to 53 minus my liquid that is 45. So it will be 53 minus 45 divided by the difference is 58 minus 45. It will be 
T eight minus forty five. This is zero point sixty one fifty three. Or I can also say that this is equal to sixty point one fifty three percent. That's a fraction of solid. Now the fraction, on the other hand, the fraction of my liquid phase, that's XL. This XL is equal to the composition of solid minus my composition W0 divided by composition of solid minus composition of liquid, meaning that XL will be equal to the composition of solid is 58. So this will be 58 minus my composition of 53 divided by 58 minus 45. In other words, XL will be equal to 0 0.3843. Or if I want to write it as a percentage, it would be 38.46. When I add these two, then they should add the 100%. And finally, we have question B, which is make a similar phase analysis at 1,500 degrees Celsius. So if I go back, I see that at 1,500 degrees Celsius, I am right here, where the only thing that I have is liquid. That's all I have. Right, if I project this line. So I can simply answer here that the only phase, the phase that I have is only liquid and the composition or concentration is 100% liquid. So I don't have to do anything there. 100% so liquid, 0% alpha or 0% solid. And finally, we have to sketch the microstructure for each case. So first we have 1,300 degrees Celsius and then we have 1,500 degrees Celsius. Here we have two phases. So we have liquid and solid phases. So I will simply draw something like this to represent the fact that we have a liquid phase. And of course I have some solid particles or solid phase Alpha. Well, at 1,500 Celsius, the only thing that I have is 100% liquid. If I analyze 1,100, for instance, assuming that I did this, then my, or the number of phrases that I would have would be what? Only solid. Uh, only, solid, only, solid right? only solid, exactly. But for instance, so, 1,300, if I had a different composition, let's say 80, 20, I would be where? Or 90, 10, I would be right here, correct? So 1,300 Celsius and 90 weight percent nickel. What do I have here? Only solid. So I only so, have those two phases, liquid and solid, only when I'm within this region. 